grace, peace, mercy to all of you. Thank you for hopping on here today for another one of our midweek devotions on our YouTube channel, Pastor JT, with you once again uh, for a story from Scripture from the Gospel of Luke. We're going to be looking at Luke chapter 15, verses 17 through 24. As I read it, you'll, you'll probably recognize it as a pretty familiar Bible story. But once again, Luke 15, 17 to 24. If you have your Bible, you can crack it open to that particular passage. If you don't, no worries. Uh, once again, I will be reading the passage for you like I always do. Well, let us uh, begin first with a word of prayer. Holy and gracious God, and through the life, death, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to reveal an embrace that is wide and open always. May we trust in that promise of grace whenever we return. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, have you ever had to um, return something, you know, like to the store? Yeah, usually that, that happens, you know, when something you buy, when it breaks, or you're maybe dissatisfied with it when you get it home, or it turns out that you actually really didn't need it in the first place. You know, in those cases, you know, you're returning something that you don't want. But when it's you who is returning, right, that's different. Well, usually when we think about returning, we think about returning to, you know, uh, often maybe visit a place that we grew up, right? Uh, visit somewhere that holds uh, a special memory for you. And so you return to remember that time and, and to celebrate it. But other times you return to a place and maybe a people who weren't very good to you. And, you're re and you remember kind of the hurt of it. And yet maybe you return in order to forgive and to move forward in your life. And then there are other times that, you know, where your return is really your own need uh, to be forgiven, right? You return to admit your fault in a situation or acknowledge the, the hurt you may have caused. And so sometimes you return to admit your mistakes, accept the consequences. And that's the kind of return we're going to be hearing about in this gospel reading today for our devotion. Once again, Luke 15 uh, verses 17 through 24. And this is what the author recounts for us. But when... The son came to himself. He said, how many of my father's hired hands have bread enough and to spare? But here I am dying of hunger. And I will get up and go to my father. And I will say to him, Father, I've sinned against you, heaven and before you. I'm no longer worthy to be called your son. Treat me like one of your hired hands. And so he set off and went to his father. But while he was still far off, his father saw him. And was filled with compassion. He ran and put his arms around him and kissed him. Then the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you. I am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to his servants, Quickly, bring out a robe, the best one, and put it on him. Put a, ringer on, a ring on his finger and sandals on his feet. And get the fatted calf and kill it. And let us eat and celebrate, for this son of mine was dead. And is alive. He was lost and is found. And they began to celebrate. And what we hear about is the, the sons, you know, the prodigal son as we know him, about his return to his, his dad. And in that return, he is ready to relinquish his position as a son and to serve only as a hired hand. He's ready to beg for forgiveness and accept his dad's judgment. But what he receives upon his returning is nothing like he expected. And he received more than forgiveness. He received a welcoming and loving embrace. He received grace upon grace, as the Gospel of John puts it. As Henry Nouwen writes, this is a story about returning I realize the importance of returning over and over again. My life drifts away from God. I have to return. My heart moves away from God. My first love, I have to return. My mind wanders to strange images. I have to return. Returning is a lifelong struggle. And I'm moved by the fact that the Father didn't require any higher motivation. And His love was so total and unconditional that He simply welcomed His Son home. 
And when it comes to God, we will receive no less than the prodigal son received. We will not receive a wagging finger, a, a voice of judgment ridiculing us for all of our mistakes. Instead, we will receive a welcoming embrace. And because God loves us, before we can do anything for God, now, even before we are able to love God, God first loves us and desires for us to becoming as loving as themselves. And so we never have to fear we never have to worry about what we might receive when we return to God. Because God's promise is always welcome. Well, thank you for joining me today. Let's close with a word of prayer. Almighty God, you have opened yourself to us no matter what we may do or not do. No matter how many times we may fail or fall, that we return to you, you will open your arms to us, ready and eager to embrace us. For you love us unconditionally. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. Well, thank you, everyone, um, once again for hopping on here today. We'll be back at it next week. I hope you have some time then as well. Uh, to join us. Until then, uh, God bless you all and have a great and wonderful day.